We are back, and uh, as you can see, we are finally live. But this whole time, I've been recording, and I was live. We had some technical difficulties, and I apologize. It's something that always happened. But as you can see, you can see me, you can see Jim, and now you're really going to get to see who's behind the screens, uh, who's behind the scenes of all these schools, okay? So once again, we're at ISS uh, NY Job Fair, um, and we're here with recruiters. Um, and the candidates are starting to come in. I'm just trying to get a, 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 a sense of what these schools are like, where they are, you know, what the future is like for them. So we have Jim here. I'm going to let him introduce himself. He can, and if you just take a look here, you know, right. I like that uh, I finally got, but you can see the pink here. And literally our pants is royal blue of the state. Like we coordinated this so we could be here today. So Jim, please tell us where all this vibrant color is coming from. All right. Well, thanks, Mike. First, it's unfortunate that the camera doesn't see our fancy shoes. Yep, here. Right. <laughs> and it's a pleasure to be here. I get to be the director of the Cayman International School in the, in the Cayman Islands, and I really appreciate you uh, making space for, for me to share, share a story. Wow, sounds good. Please tell us a little bit more about this Cayman Islands School and exactly, you know, what type of temperatures is over there. Let's start off with that. Sure. Well, I guess uh, uh, the, the temperature, if you want uh, literal, it, uh, it hovers around uh, 29, uh, 30 degrees Celsius, which is uh, low to mid 80s in uh, in Fahrenheit, with uh, cool uh, cool breezes, and uh, pretty much is a paradise island. And then temperature, metaphorically, it's uh, our school is a, a very welcoming environment. When you walk on campus, it's it's palpable that people are smiling and saying good uh, good mm -hmm. morning, good morning to you. Very good. So very good. That's the temperature in another way. Okay, so it sounds like you said they were welcoming. We're welcoming each other. Because yeah. one question I was asking is like, uh, I wanted to know how does it feel as soon as somebody steps onto your school's campus? Right. You know, like what is the feeling that someone gets? And that the hello automatically is also something I learned from AIE. Even a smile is contagious. Right. See, right. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> you smile right. back. Right. <laughs> so tell us exactly what the, what that environment is like. How do you welcome? Uh, the students, the teachers, or even the community itself. Right. I think recently we had an inspection, and, and that's what the inspectors said as soon as they walked on campus, it felt like it was an oasis, a breath of fresh air. And I think a lot of that has to do with our school, our students, our staff, our parents working as hard as they can to embody our community principles mm -hmm. of uh, kindness, which is in English, oh. rather than edu babble, sustainability, also. In, in English, partnership mm -hmm. and and good intent. And so people do really feel that. Uh, they, they live those community principles. And for, for example, we have children that start their own uh, uh, committees and work, the kindness council, the leadership council, and that's done without, the, you know, there's, there's adult support mm -hmm. that's done on their own saying, we wanna do this and this is how we'll reach out to the community. So. Uh, they are living those community principles and you feel it as soon as you walk on campus. For that example alone, not only for the community, but isn't that empowering the students too? You're giving them a chance to teach, you just said? For sure. And it, you know, education is messy. And we know as adults, we can mobilize people, we can organize things, and we need to have, give the students a space and time for them to have their own voice, to make their own mistakes. Right. And that's the way that they're going to learn. I know I can organize with assembly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it's students that we want to be able to, mm. to learn. And, and so that that voice and all the action that our students are doing is quite impressive. Wow. For example, just most recently, mm -hmm. uh, two of our students were invited to uh, represent the Cayman Islands at COP28. Uh, kind of represent. That so that's the uh, United Nations uh, Conference of the Parties that's specifically related uh, to climate change around the world. Wow. And so these are students representing our, our country. For our language. Our presentations and things. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, so, modeling again, kindness, partnership, and sustainability for oh. sure. Yeah. Um, another question I guess I have for you is exactly, I guess, around the culture of the school itself. Is there any particular events or activities that stick out to you that, that just sticks out to you um, that you want to share with the audience? Yes, uh, absolutely. I think on a, a more a, a smaller level, the regular learning celebrations where parents come in and and see the fantastic work that our that students are doing, mm -hmm. most recently related to the to the ocean, had a very powerful 
one um, that was related to essentially the atrocities of war. And we used some uh, local activities around Remembrance Day to kick that uh, off. And then our students shared with the, our community, mm -hmm. our parents, mm -hmm. uh, about the challenges and the complexity of the of atrocity of war. So it's not just food, fun, flags, and festivals. It's going in deep and looking deeper, you know, the cultural iceberg, what's underneath the water versus just what we see on top. Then on a more heartwarming, uh, heartwarming uh, level, mm -hmm. uh, right now we have uh, students actually this weekend uh, presenting at a foundation called the Alex Banton Foundation, it's specific to uh, mental health issues on island. And so that ha happens on campus, but also uh, off campus. So mm -hmm. it's, it's quite it's quite impressive. They they keep attuned to more current issues uh, that are that are children. Mm -hmm. I hear that you only see teachers or students or parents, you see humans. Yeah, so critical. <laughs> yeah, we, 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 we serve in a uh, human based uh, industry, don't we? Uh, you spoke a lot of addiction. Mm -hmm. You guys, you guys, directed towards that as a mission, or like, is that more, was that a coincidence? Like, and some by coincidence, a lot by design. We're, we're a small island, Grand Cayman Island is, is very small, and we're always just a stone's throw, literally, from from the ocean. Mm -hmm. And and so a lot of our, our student work, such as Protect Our Future, is very specific to uh, saving the environment. Recently, we had uh, Dr. Celia Earle, who some people might know her as the Jane Goodall of the, of the seas. And she was at our, our school, and, and a lot of that had to do with a group of our students who protect our future, looking to have a blue spot in the Cayman, in Grand Cayman Island related to the, uh, the harbor, which mm -hmm. is truly impressive work that our students are doing. So it's some by design, some by choice, and some by the, uh, the messiness happenstance of education. I just speak on Parents, whether it be the or how it received it. Sure. Yeah, the, the Cayman Islands prides itself in having over 140 nationalities and people coming from all around the world. And sometimes in international schools, we gloss over that. We think of diversity by virtue of passport. Mm -hmm. And we know that there's more uh, to that. Uh, so at our school, our demographics, about 25% of our students are Caymanian. About twenty five percent are from are from Canada, which is kind of, and then our next two largest groups are from the UK, where British Overseas Territory, mm -hmm. and the United States. And then after that, it gets kind of more unique relative to other locations. It's uh, people from South Africa, uh, Ireland, India, and Brazil are right. the next biggest demographics of our forty six different nationalities. But deeper than nationality, we have a very active group of students and staff members, both teachers, teaching assistants, and operation staff that uh, work with our belonging work. And they're, they're leading professional development, every professional development day, as, as well as uh, work with our students. Our DIJ student group is students from grade three, straight uh, right up to grade 12. Which is uh, which is quite impressive, and we've made mistakes along the way. You know, the Cayman Islands prides itself in being a harmonious uh, place, and we know that uh, there really isn't such a thing as a fully harmonious place. Mm -hmm. And our students and staff have been uncovering uh, things related to inequities, whether it's uh, related to uh, gender identity, race, and class. More recently, looking into uh, issues related to neurodiversity, as well as even things that sometimes we gloss over, families, families of different makeup, whether it's a single parent or a person being raised by a grandparent, and so on. Uh, yeah. it's <laughs> we, 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 we work hard. Yeah, we work hard. It's, um, our, our group is involved in, in not just in uh, kind of the, the umbrella of DIJ and belonging work yeah, works into more 
specific things, our HR practices, what uh, what we're doing as far as uh, curriculum, where does our community outreach lie? Mm -hmm. Where 75% of our students are from another country, yet we are visitors mm -hmm. to the Cayman Islands. That's right. And what do we do to make sure that we appreciate and honor the history of the Cayman Islands? Oh, yes. uh, and still have the chance for those children to appreciate where they're from too. Exactly. It's, it's, it's so it's so critical. It's the world we're in. I don't think there's any fighting that, but I think it's the perfect model uh, right there. There's another question I want to ask. Top, we end off towards our 15 minute interview here, and I think it's very important. Um, it's just as a millennial, you know, at one point I did have technology, and at one point, uh, that's the only thing that I can even right. foresee. You know, I couldn't see myself not even yeah. using the technology in the cases. So with like. AI and other fast growing things, you know, I want to know exactly, especially in the last year, right? This AI is not going anywhere. Right. How does your school adapt to these new technologies or, you know, just your thoughts around that? You know, is, is new technology okay or is there resistance at your school when new technology comes around and you're waiting for it to get to a certain level where it's adopted by right. the mass or do you guys kind of tweak it in there to see how it could work for you before it gets out to the masses? Oh, that's a, that's a great question, Mike. Yeah, we, um, a little mixture of both. There's some places where we're nudged and prod due to the product, due to society, and we have uh, no shortage of early adapters. Mm -hmm. And then we have no shortages. It's the Cayman Islands, as in many places in the Caribbean, there's conservatism and resistance to change in light of belief systems. Uh, often, and uh, we have people that are going, oh, this is very scary. Where we've been able to, I think, find the uh, the comfortable point right now is recognizing that AI is a wonderful start, and we need to have some HI in there, too. Mm -hmm. so human, human interaction. Uh, human intelligence? Okay. Human intelligence, human interaction, and recognizing that they can complement each other. Particularly when we think of AI, some of the uh, same thing tedious work of setting up a right. document or yeah. something. It's foolish not to take advantage of, uh, of that. So take advantage of some of those intuitive things, if you will, that AI has to offer, but recognizing that our greatest protection from whatever we're worried about is the stuff between our ears. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can't just take what you get from AI for, for granted. So. Amen. That's a great place to be. Yeah, you're welcome, you're welcome to come. You're welcome to come. You're welcome to come. You're welcome to come. Jim, I appreciate you so much for the, all these wise words. It looks like you have a great school over there with you, and I'm sure you're pretty happy to be over there. If you could just share with our audience um, where they can find more information, whether it's about the mission or tuition and things like that. So great. if they're interested in coming, where do they go? Sure. Well, they go... Uh, we're almost right in the middle of Grand Cayman Island. Our website is cis at cis.ky. Well, actually, that's our email. Our website is www.cis.ky. So KY is the uh, the two uh, suffix initials for, for the Cayman Islands. And, and aren't you on the radio station over there? Sometimes I get to be on Cayman uh, Radio. Absolutely. Well, I get to do some sessions about scholarship and, and learning with uh, Sir Sterling Ebanks. Oh, the wow. Activities. Well, could you end us off with your beginning, you know, the little thing, that the little ad piece that you're oh, okay. you know, okay. well, okay. okay. What's the name of your, proper name of your podcast? Oh, ISS EDU Learn, Ask Me Anything. This is ISS EDU Learn, Ask Me Anything with Mike Pierre in the afternoon and also in the evening shift and sometimes late at night on FM radio. Thanks, Jim. That's Jim from Cayman Islands, guys. Thank you so much. And we're taking a 15-minute break, and we'll be right back with our next school. Hang on in there, educators. Trying to get the right school for you.